call this meeting of Greenville City Council to order. Um, welcome to tonight's council meeting. Uh, please stand for the invocation that will be given by Council Member Suddeth and please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. And we'll have Council Member Doyle do a special introduction at that time. Please join me in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this day and we thank you for this opportunity that we can, uh, can gather and uh, do the work of the people today. We thank you for the blessings that we have to live in this wonderful city. Pray that you continue to bless us. We say a special prayer uh, this evening, Lord, for uh, Chief Harold Jennings and his service to our great city. Pray that you be with uh, his wife Gladys and his family during this time of loss. And we pray that uh, you'd uh, give us the opportunity tonight to, uh, to be good listeners and to do the work that you'd have us to do. We're always thankful for the work of, of our employees and, and uh, particularly our public safety folks. And we thank you for the uh, work that they do for us each and every day. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. At this time, I would like to ask for the Weeblos Pack 9, Buncombe Street Pack 9, to come forward and lead us in the pledge. They represent Summit Drive Elementary, Hallam Elementary, Bells Crossing, Armstrong Elementary, and Blythe. And these boys are working on their civic badge and met with Captain Howie Thompson from the police department and asked some very good questions about city government. So at this time, we'll ask you to lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. That was a great play to lose us. City Clerk, if you please call the roll. Council Member Amy Doyle. Here. Council Member Lillian Fleming. Here. Council Member Jill Littlejohn. Here. Council Member David Sutter. Here. Council Member George Fletcher. Here. Council Member Gay Spray. Here. Mayor Knox White. Mayor Pro Tem Littlejohn. You have before you the minutes of September 12, 2016. Um, unless there are any amendments or objections, the minutes will stand approved as submitted. Okay. Hearing none, uh, we have one person signed up to speak tonight, uh, Mr. Clarence Thornton. Is Mr. Thornton here? He's here. He wants to step up. Going once. Well, he's coming. Okay. If Mr. Thornton steps back in, we'll allow him to speak. All right. Um, we'll move on to the let's see public hearing. Do we have a public hearing tonight? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Nine A public hearing for a right of way abandonment of an unimproved, unnamed public alley off of Crescent Avenue. Mayor Pro Tem Little John and members of council, we've received a petition for the abandonment of a right of way of an unimproved, unnamed alley located off of Crescent Avenue. We've sent out all of our notifications and we received one letter of support and no uh, letters to the contrary uh, and have received no questions. Are there any other questions about that? Just to clarify, Dwayne, this is only 10 feet wide, and so it would not be eligible for frontage for a subdivided lot. It's it's 19 feet wide, but no, it would, it would just be an alley. It would be used to subdivide. And Dwayne, can I just, can I give, ask you to give one minute just to kind of so the boys can kind of brought up to speed what you do and what an abandonment means? Sure. I'm the city engineer for the city of Greenville. And I deal with traffic issues, sewer, stormwater, and also property issues. And an abandonment is sometimes there are small pieces of property that the city owns that are for public purposes, such as roads or stormwater or other, pro uh, other projects. Sometimes those pieces of property are not needed anymore, and the citizens or the adjacent property owners ask if they can have it. So we take that property and we split it equally between the two property owners because it's not being used for public purposes. So that's what an abandonment is. Thank you. Very good. Any other questions? All right, that concludes our answer again. We'll now move on to the consent agenda. Do I have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Okay. 
Yes, ma'am. Council Member Doyle? Aye. Council Member Fleming? Aye. Council Member Sutton? Aye. Council Member Fletcher? Aye. Council Member Spray? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Littlejohn? Aye. Moving on to the regular agenda. Um, new business ordinance first reading item 15A. An ordinance to authorize the execution of sewer easements to renewable water resources for upgrades to the sewer trunk lines along Richland Creek. Do I have a motion and a second? Move for approval. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Doyle. Aye. Council Member Fleming. Aye. Council Member Sutton. Aye. Council Member Fletcher. Aye. Council Member Spray. Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Littlejohn. Aye. Um, item 15B. An ordinance to appropriate 20,000 in the donation fund K-9 program for the purchase of an explosive detection K-9. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? I see the chief has stepped up. Well, um, thank you, Mayor Pro Tem and members of city council, Mr. Manager. I just wanted to, uh, if I may, take just a moment to recognize the Remo Lions Club because this donation came from one source. Uh, and uh, it's a pretty substantial donation to help us improve our capacity as a police department in our service. So uh, if I may ask Lieutenant Johnson to join me because he runs our canine program and he reached out to the Lions Club members. Um, Mr. Gary Anderson, Mr. Dan Batson, Ms. Jerry Batson, and Ms. Phyllis Foster. If you all could uh, join me up here. These are the members of the Lions Club. Uh, we are missing three members who joined us and presented us with a, uh, a check. And I think that um, I think that they would like to say a few words, but I know on behalf of the police department, we're very, very grateful uh, for your support of the programs uh, and the initiatives of the PD. And this is uh, quite a substantial and meaningful contribution to the safety of our city. Yes. I just wanted to recognize them and, and uh, give you all a chance to ask any questions uh, of them or of us as you may, and perhaps uh, a photograph. Yeah. Why, did, did you guys want to say a few words, and then after your words, you can come up and take a photograph? Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. The Green Lions Association is one of the oldest uh, clubs in the state of South Carolina. We were chartered in 1922. Some of the um, Movers and shakers of Greenville have been members of that club. A lot of the uh, business owners in the Greenville area have been members in the past. There was a magistrate that was a member and many, many business owners in the area, like I said. So we've had a very rich heritage. We continue to meet uh, once a month. We would love to have anyone join our club. Um, and we are so honored to be able to have the funds to donate this money to the to the um, Greenville Police K-9 Fund. We feel like it's something that can um, be uh, an asset to all residents of the upstate to, to ensure everyone's safety. So um, we're just honored to, to donate this to the Greenville area. Well, on behalf of the mayor who's not here, and I think I can speak for all the members of city council. We thank you so much for your uh, dedication and for this donation. We really appreciate it. Um, and we'd love you guys to come up and uh, take a picture. If we can, I have a motion and a second, if we can approve oh, it. We need to approve it first. <laughs> <laughs> so let's have the court call the roll so we can officially take it. Council Member Doyle. Aye. Council Member Fleming. Aye. Council Member Sutter. Aye. Council Member Fletcher. Aye. Council Member Spray. Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Littlejohn. Aye. And now we'll give you a round of applause. <laughs>
Yes. Okay. Moving on to item 15C. An ordinance to appropriate 185000 in the Law Enforcement Special Revenue Fund Department of Homeland Security account for the purpose of purchasing new equipment and services for the Greenville Police Department. Motion for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? Pardon? Right. Council Member Doyle? Aye. Council Member Fleming? Aye. Council Member Sutter? Aye. Council Member Fletcher? Aye. Council Member Spray? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Little John. Aye. I see the chief standing. You still want to say anything? You did? Well, I, I did have a question, but that was really fast. <laughs> I'm sorry. But I did want to say that you have spent a lot of money investing in technology and equipment and, and training. And those are those are the three things that we heard from your department that they really wanted. And so I appreciate you doing this. Um, can you talk about what this use of funds is going to be? Sure, yes, ma'am. I, I sure can. Uh, so so this uh, predominantly uh, increases our cache of bicycles uh, and the equipment that goes on the bikes. Bikes are unfortunately not cheap for the police department's purchase, especially when they're upfitted with the lights and uh, the, the police-related equipment. Uh, also, hitches for 30 cars. We'll have 30 bikes in our fleet. We'll have 30 cars that are outfitted to carry the bikes uh, along with the racks uh, themselves that enable the bikes to be attached to the car, move where we need to, uh, get out, ride, and if we get a call for service that requires the car, uh, load the bikes right back up on the car and move, uh, rather than having to park the cars at a facility somewhere and then uh, bike ride and, and you're only using one or the other. It's a big chunk of it. Uh, to complement the, the remainder of our, well, both our bike uh, uh, patrol and also the work that we uh, are more and more having to do throughout the country in managing uh, large groups of people and particularly in protests uh, we have uh, that cooler uh, more comfortable uniform the blue uniform that we use on both the bikes and that uh, and it has been well received it's a little less formal a little less uh, intimidating uh, to use that uniform so we have money in there for that those uniforms for each of our officers and uh, helmets for um, those situations where we might need them we hope we will never need them uh, and uh, there is also money in there. Uh, it's allocated at 40000 but anything that is remaining will revert. We just don't know, but we need to put out uh, a bid or a request for quotes for uh, a new vendor to, to support our promotional processes for uh, MPO, uh, for sergeant, and for lieutenant. And so we really don't have any, uh, a sense for how much that'll be, although I think that the forty k that's allocated in and this this money is uh, well over sufficient uh, to do that. We just want to make sure that we would be able to go to, to bid for it. Well, I know we all appreciate it as we grow the trail that your officers can access the trail, be on the trail, um, and are you know, on the street. It's, it's much more, they're much more accessible. So thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. So item 15C will see the first reading. Before we move to item 15D, I know that Mr. Thornton has stepped in. We had you listed at the front to make comments. Did you still want to make comments, Mr. Thornton? Uh, unfortunately, I do. Okay. Well, if you come up to the podium, you'll have three minutes. And be sure to state your address for the record as well. Okay. Uh, if I could just say for the scouts, what Mr. Thornton is doing right now, we have a time at the beginning of every meeting that any citizen, anyone, can come in and speak for three minutes. And so that's what Mr. Thornton's doing tonight. He signed up, and so he'll have three minutes to address us on any topic you Sorry, want. Of course. Um, my name is Clarence Thornton, and I was out at 114 Dolphin Street. Um, what's still appalling to me is how this city rewards misconduct. Now, I'm sure everybody read all of the news how they have 8% white officers as opposed to 13% African American. I'm sure you read in the news how they pull over African Americans more so than they do other races. I'm sure you read and seen on TV with Channel 7 News where they say, does race matter? Where they pull over and stop and arrest African-Americans on a higher level 
of drug activity as opposed to our white American brothers. So to sit here at this time and reward conduct that's not acceptable. I still would like to remind everybody that racial profiling is against the Constitution of the United States of America. African American rights are being violated. We've seen this with Castle Little John, with the same thing right there at Former D Street. So sit there and say it don't exist, is insensitive. And you look at any other organization in any city council that has these kind of problems, not just in pulling African Americans over, but in the rest, in the way they're charged, they will be rewarding behavior. You don't reward bad behavior in your children. So why do you, you reward bad behavior and misconduct that violates the Constitution of the United States of America with these officers? Any other time, I would be more than happy to say, give officers a pay raise. But you have to earn it. You have to earn your trust. And to do this is totally disrespectful. And I don't think I would say is everybody that voted for this in this climate, they asked for the mayor resignation in the mayor because of these same kind of things. When the United States Justice Department went in Ferguson and saw these same results, they asked for change immediately. So I hate to be the elephant in the room that tells everybody the truth about everything, but if city council can't address these issues, and then like that, we have an African American. Who's overseeing these? The captain, the sergeants. How did this exist? How did it get up to city council? And Charles Seven News have to tell us when their own city council don't even know these facts. Something's deeply wrong. Thank you, and may God bless you. I would like to say, Mr. Thorne, as soon as the meeting is over, I, I'd like to speak to you because I, I do feel that some of the things that you're saying that Channel 7 said, we haven't heard that information. So I don't think we're all on the same page with the information, and I'd like to discuss that with you as soon as this meeting is over. Okay. I'd like to move on to item 15D. An ordinance authorizing the execution and delivery of documents relating to the provision of municipal facilities consenting to and proving to the issuance of not exceeding 16 million City of Greenville Public Facilities Corporation installment purchase revenue bonds series 2016. Motion for approval. Any discussion? Great work. Clerk to call the roll. Council Member Doyle. Aye. Council Member Fleming. Aye. Council Member Sutter. Aye. Council Member Fletcher. Aye. Council Member Spray. Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Little John. All right. Item 15D receives its first reading, so we'll move on to now to new business resolutions. First and final reading, item 16A. A resolution to establish an economic development fund for public infrastructure projects and process for the allocation of the fund. Mayor Pro Tem. Just like that. Okay. Any discussion? Yeah, Council I Council? have a question. Um, I'm going to actually defer to John and. and perhaps the chair, we are in the future going to be issue, having um, a public document for all of our economic development requests. Is that right? And obviously some of the information is going to be confidential, but the, in, the intent was to create some sort of paper trail and make it more transparent. But I did get a call today about that. So, Madam Chair, you, you want to make comments first? Yes, yes, that is exactly right, that we will depend on the applicant to explain to us why uh, that their project is worthy of uh, public funding. So okay. yes, it will be in, um, on record and uh, the staff will review it and be sure everything is in order and then bring us a recommendation. And we do continue to grapple with, of course, as you know, that, um, times that things are confidential and, and we'll do our best to find that balance. And then, John, do you recommend that we put the application online, similar to the way we have like a rezoning application in the planning department, or how, how will that be available to the public? Sure, great, great question. I want to thank council for taking the leadership role on helping us further put structure around how the city participates in public-private partnerships. And so, 
the way we envision this occurring is anyone seeking public support for a project will fill out an application. We've had several public dialogues about what should be in that application and the purpose and you have to share kind of the nature of your project, the intention, but also if there's a performer associated with that in return for the public investment. Um, we would, um, after this action is taken, I think our economic development department will reach out to those folks that have worked with in the past and make sure they understand that now the process has been standardized. Uh, we'll make that application um, available to anyone seeking support. And we'll go through our normal uh, avenues of, of getting the information out, which includes the website uh, and other, uh, other, other methods, traditionally of paper and non or digital ways of doing so. So going forward, um, everybody will have the same information. It will be received and processed by staff and then forwarded on the council for its consideration. Thank you, Councilman Uh I would ask a question. In terms of the process, will include the criteria as to why we will, we will accept it? Um, I would think that um, the applicant would um, share with you the intent behind the project okay. and how it would benefit the city of Greenville. I think staff will allow um, input because the criteria changes often and the reason for that is council has its priorities and council's priorities have changed. So I would think staff would make sure that before you got the application, we check those boxes of the things that are uh, listed as your current priorities, um, but we've also make a recommendation to make sure that it fits in your strategic plan and how you want to go forward. Ms. Whitworth, am I missing something? Just wanted to point out, this is for public infrastructure right. associated with private development. Yes, public infrastructure. Correct. Okay. Okay. Well, I just, um, this may seem pretty obvious, but just, just for, um, I guess, just a suggestion, as much of this as possible, that could go through the budget process I agree. so that we minimize yes. how much out of cycle um, okay. recommendations or work that we have to do, I think would be good. Thank you. This, this also established the public infrastructure fund, and I'll let you talk about the use of that. I know you've done a lot of work. Okay. We, we're going to use our, uh, the city's increment of the West End TIF and the CBD TIF to set aside to continue the very um, successful efforts we've made in public-private partnerships. And uh, that would be the funding source from which we obtain it. But I totally hear you, David, when we have these big tickets, it's best for it to go through the funding budgeting process. But there will certainly be times through the year that, that projects will come forward and we'll need to address them this and we'll have a funding source. Yeah. One more question, John. I assume that this would not jeopardize any of confidential kinds of economic development projects? It will not. We've had much discussion about certain projects and uh, the confidential nature of that. I think um, what we're requesting uh, via the, uh, uh, the person filling out the application is there's information that we all will, will acknowledge to be public. There's some uh, information that uh, they will be classified or, or confidential and um, if we ever receive a request for information to work with the legal department about what's the um, to be confidential. Any other discussion? So just for, may I just say something, just for members of the public that are here and for the Boy Scouts that when some people bring projects to the city and they're going to build um, a giant mixed-use apartment or a grocery store or a big project and they need to have sewer or a new road or something done on the public side, then we can participate. And this is a way for us to open it up to make it transparent what we're using public dollars for to help a private investment. So it's really a partnership. So I just wanted you to talk about, when we talked earlier about public-private partnerships, this is, this is how the use of funds is. Any other questions or comments? Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Item 16A receives first and final reading. Item 16B. A resolution to consent to certain property to be located within the city be included in the Greenville County and Anderson County Joint County Industrial and Business Park. Motion. Move approval. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Discussion? 
Mike, is this something that you want to just kind of go give a little bit of briefing on? Sure, I'll be happy to. Uh, this involves a piece of property that's going to be annexed into the city, and it's for a, uh, a project where they've asked for the county to provide certain uh, incentives by putting it into a multi-county park. It's uh, in the form of enhanced job uh, tax credits, and you have to be in a park to get those. So since the property is going to be in the city, the city has to consent to the property going into the park, but it's actually the, uh, the county of Greenville is actually the one putting the property in. We just have to give our access. Any other questions or comments? Okay. All in favor? Uh, any opposed? Item 16B receives first and final reading, and that concludes our um, items on the agenda. Mr. Manager, do you have any information? Sure. Nothing. I think the board scouts are ready to go. As well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are too. Do, do any of the council members have anything that they would like to share? Okay. Well, hearing no other business, we will adjourn this meeting. Thank you for coming. <laughs>